Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Sidian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe, power plant, and avionics certified. The date today is December 16, 2016. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss airplane wing configuration and flight performance. The wing plan form types are rudimentary and fundamental focusing on popular applications in airframe structures. Starting first with the swept back wing plan form. This type of a wing plan form will want to lift forward because of the sweep. The outboard wing tips act like the tail elevator and the inboard part of the wing acts like the airplane wing. So this is ideal for tailless airplanes. Once you put a sweep into the wing plan form, the lift moment will want to lift forward compared to a straight wing which wants to lift backwards. So the weight and balance can be slightly less nose heavy due to the fact the wing tips will want to lift forward. Now at the very wing tips elevons can be implemented. Elevon is a mixture of both aileron and elevator together. So when both elevons come up you have a climb. When both come down you have dive. And when the right Elevon, left elevon goes up and the right elevon comes down you're going to have a roll and you're going to have a twist because if you think about it when they differentiate as in one going up and one going down versus equalize both going up both going down it's going to create a stall on the left wing and a lift moment on the right wing but it's also going to twist the wing so the result is is if you wanted to make a coordinated turn with both the rudder and the aileron effect you could get that simply by differentially deflecting the elevons also due to the fact the wing is swept the airflow going over the wing not only travels over the wing but it also deflects outward and creates an outboard thrust effect which further stabilizes the yaw axis. Adding winglets or stall fences can further help to separate the high speed and low speed air flows at the wing tips reducing the stall speed and also adding excessive, uh, adding additional thrust to the flight, maximizing aerodynamic efficiency. Also, when a swept back wing or any type of wing also has a shorter cord at the tip compared to the root, it is also a tapered wing. So this is a swept back and a tapered wing combined. Whenever you taper a wing, due to the fact that the wing tip cord is shorter than the root cord this prevents the wing tip from reaching a higher angle of attack without stalling. If you have a longer cord you can make a steeper climb at higher angle of attack without risking airflow separation in the stall but at the wing tip that has a shorter cord compared to the root cord you're limited on how much angle the wing tip can make before a potential wing tip stall occurs which can lead to a sudden spin or e even a catastrophic failure in flight so therefore at the very tips of the wings the outboard side this wing tip is twisted negative downward. This is also known as washout represented by the alpha symbol as you can see here 
there's about two to three degrees of washout negative so that when it makes a steep climb it prevents the wingtips from stalling. That's a mandatory requirement on any tapered wing to have a washout at the wingtip at the very minimum or else you risk having a wingtip stall when you make a steeper climb. Also with a swept back wing you can make very steep climbs and allowing the drag to be minimized and deflected outward and in heavy airflow and wind speeds the swept wing will behave a lot better due to the fact that it is spilling off a lot of airflow outward. The advantages of a swept wing is that the stability of the yaw axis is improved. There is fewer flight control surfaces required. It inherently wants to lift forward, but the drawback is it's a little harder to build. It takes a little bit more skill and time to do so. And also the weight and balance and center of gravity is a very tight tolerance. Even a few percentage off and you could risk a weight and balance catastrophic failure during flight. Also the profile of this airfoil is a reflex airfoil which means it's like a sideways S because you're going to want to spill airflow upward so that you can counteract the lifting moment forward so the inherent stability improves during flight. So this is an example of what a swept back wing will elicit based on this geometry. There's another example of a swept wing on an Airbus A380 and since aircraft designers on airliners are very conservative they still add a tail and use the whole staff trim actuator to create inherent stability during flight with minimal trim functions linked to the gyros. Notice another swept back wing, flying wing, with heavy taper and heavy sweep. There's an example of your reflex airfoil on a flying wing, especially for swept back applications without a tail. Here's a constant cord airplane wing with equal amount of lift from root to tip, so there is no wing lift distribution differential. So a plane like this can get off the ground at very slow speeds due to the high drag and high lift, but it is limited in maximum high speed flight. A plane like this, a low wing piper with constant cord, would have a maximum speed not to exceed about 120 miles per hour or about 220 kilometers an hour. So this is a slow flying general aviation slash recreation aircraft limited to high drag and high lift and low speeds. If they wanted to improve the fuel economy and speed they would taper this wing, twist the wingtip negative and allow more forward flight. Here's an example of a swept forward wing and of course it's going to want to lift rear but it is sort of like a canard with a forward horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Since it wants to lift even more backward than a straight constant cord wing you would have to have a lot more weight ballast in the front and high pitch control authority in the front and then kind of balanced out with a power plant in the rear. Here's a V-tail, empennage tail. This has a blend of both a rudder and an elevator system. So when both of these rudder vaders go downward, it is the same as down elevator for dive. When both go up, it's the same as up elevator for climb. But when 
the left rudder meter goes up and the right right rudder meter goes down it's the same as having two vertical rudders that are deflecting to the right so in that case you would have a yaw to the right so these will differentially and equally deflect the advantage is, is that you have uh, better potential stability at higher speeds provided these planes are flown properly in accordance with the pilot operating handbook however the drawbacks are is that the linkages are a little bit more complicated require more maintenance and the pilot operation is a bit more touchy and not subject to erratic inputs due to the uh, moments that are both wanting to bend in yaw and also deflect in pitch causing stresses both on load bearing torsion and twist torsion is twist but torsion load bearing and bending all happen at the same time if you're not careful with these and the amount of wetted area is equal to a conventional tail with a rudder and horizontal stabilizer so you have to keep the wetted area up about what a conventional tail empennage is but if you fly these correctly with incremental moments and in speed increases and you tighten up into the air at high speeds these actually give you a little bit more alleviation of drag however these these planes like the Bonanza V-tail used to be called the doctor killers because doctors would buy these planes and some of them would erratically put control inputs in and they would cause flutter and some of these tails would break off and that was it. It's a done deal. The airplane would go down and crash and burn. But there are advantages if you know how to fly these right but this is just another concept in conventional or popular I want to say uh, wing platform types and axis control structures. There's your conventional empennage tail. Now this is the T-tail empennage and the advantage is, is that uh, you have better pitch control authority but one of the disadvantages is that you have to make a landing approach at a much higher speed due to the fact that this requires a little bit more airflow in order to provide pitch control. But a 727 from the 1960s and 70s like this upgraded with the correct avionics and composite structures can then have a lockout speed control preventing pilot error from approaching too slow, making these very safe. Most of these planes have been sold off to cargo and transport like FedEx now, or they've been exported to international passenger operations. 727 is a well-designed airframe, but you rarely see any flying anymore for passenger transport in the U.S. Next is the canard uh, wing plan form, which is somewhat similar to that swept forward design we saw, but basically the nose is going to be weighed down quite a bit with pilot and with the horizontal stabilizer and gear, nose gear, and as you can see is that when this wing starts to lift, you can deflect these two elevators downward and get a moment lift upward for which then the wings on a canard will produce lift but these have to be minimized in how much uplift is generated based off all speed ranges because you know with a sweep you can go back to a higher angle but one thing you don't want to do is stall these wings so these canards have to be designed with very tight tolerances but when they are designed, it's very hard to stall these, and these fly very well. Uh, actually very innovative, but if you misdesign or mismaintain a canard, you're dealing with a lot of trouble. Because think about it, the stall recovery 
if you did lose your wing lift back here would be catastrophic but that's why the pitch moment is counter balance with more weight in the front and then you have a zero lift neutrality in the structure itself followed by maximum pitch control authority with the elevators deflecting downward so once you get enough roll you can move these move these down about 10 degrees and get some really good uh, stable rotation and then these wings kick in and lift so that's the canard designed for the last of the airframe types that are popular and we'll end this lecture with the last one the delta wing and the delta wing actually is like a swept back like an elliptical like a taper we just look at the root cord and the tip cord it's three different systems together so aerodynamically speaking you're going to get a concentration of wingtip stability due to the structural profile of these tips you have an elevon here both when they go up you climb when they both go down you dive when they differentiate your roll but you're not going to get the twisting that you do with a uh, sweat back flying wing so you have to be very careful not to use the rudder during high speed flight on one of these fighters you can actually roll this 90 degrees and then use the elevator as the rudder only when you get to slow enough landing then you can start to correct the yaw axis a little bit with the rudder but remember this is extremely high wing loading this is designed for very very high speed flight so the typical takeoff speed might exceed 250 miles per hour but then again they tend to have equal amount of thrust to the weight so this is very supersonic uh, but you can see the logic behind the shape and what it does so these are the basic popular wing configuration geometries and how they affect flight performance. So the concepts to understand in this lecture is Wings are aerodynamic lift structures which derive force by airflow speed differential between the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing. Wing plan form geometry is critical to where a force lift vectors will apply and react during flight. All wing plan form geometrical types have a distinct function and purpose. Variations in wing geometry and configuration are implemented for efficient distribution of lift, drag, weight, and thrust, allowing for effective control, authority, and fuel economy during flight. Limitless wing geometric planforms may be implemented provided their shapes, geometries, and planforms reach an equilibrium in static and dynamic forces, resulting in stable flight and control authority. Thank you for watching this video lecture. I hope this may help out in understanding wing shapes, geometries, and configurations and how they elicit certain force vectors for desired flight performances. Thank you again and have a great day.